in a village outside Kiva, there's a workshop I can visit where history is remade on a daily basis. It's not just that old cognac and vodka bottles can have a new life here, as ingredients in the glaze. It's the fact that it's only since independence that this workshop and its master, Alonazar Sadurayev, have returned to the traditional styles that were once the basic ingredients of Timurid decoration. Albatta, birinchidan men va fursat bo'lamanki, musaqillikka erishganimizdan keyin men shu ota-bobolarimizning zangari qurolchiligi qayta tiklanganida fursat olaman. Ikkinchidan, davlatimiz shunchalik qo'llab-quvvatlab bizlarni shu darajaga yetkazdiki, endi hozir biz ota-bobolarimizni qilayotgan, qilgan ishlaridek xuddi shu texnologiyani shu qaytadan tiklab, xuddi shunaqa ishlayotganimizni ko'rsatdi. What is the connection between the tile makers of Kiva and Timur? Amir Timur Babamiz, bu paytlarda shu Xorazm ga kelgan paytda Xorazm ustalarini ko'rib hayrat kechgan. Masalan, Yog'och bo'y makar, qulochli, zangal qulochli. Umuman hunarmandlarga juda bayat xursand bo'lgani, keyin Xorazm ustalarini, masalan, Samarqandga, Shahrisabiz Ishqilib, Afrasiyob tomonlarga olib ketib, ulardan usta ishlarini ko'rsatishgan. Several hundred years ago, Timur put people from this province, Khorezm, to work on his palaces, mosques and minarets and all the stately places in his capital of Samarkand. One small irony, however. He didn't like living inside. He was descended from Mongols at least in part, from nomads. The buildings were all for show, to impress the foreign idiots who kept coming, wringing their hands, suing for peace, who needed, above all, to be impressed and terrified by the scourge of God. Timur preferred to live in the city's extensive gardens, in tents. Every political regime in history has used art and architecture to project its power, Timur did it, Uzbekistan's current rulers are doing it too, and that's what this part of my trip along the Silk Road in Central Asia has made clear to me. So these tiles are for tourists and citizens too. They come with a message baked in beneath the glaze. It says, be proud of our history. Visitors, be impressed when you see tiles like these by the thousands on the walls of the Registan or in your hotel carefully reassembled to surround a fireplace. Try not to think of our Soviet past, which we too are trying to forget. And don't waste too much time waiting here, because there are no Soviet buses anymore. Next time I'm heading to Iran, a country whose rich Persian past is filled with fascinating characters and where the culture and art of the empires they built spread to every part of the Silk Road. From Iran, I'll travel to the cities at the western end of the Silk Road and I'll discover that many of their great palaces, buildings and churches were inspired by the East. Paid for and made possible by the Silk Road. Stay with us here on PBS America, our 5,000 mile journey along the Silk Road, taking in some of the most extraordinary sights on our planet, continues next.